Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hi, Aaron. I have two different Clary test requests for you. One for comedian Jim Gaffian, Gaffigan and the other Mr. Fred Rogers. Let's pull those two up. Isn't Fred Rogers an actual Presbyterian minister? Hello, the neighbor. I never liked Mr. Rogers when I was a kid. He always freaked me out. Uh, <clears throat> Fred McFeely. Hey, it's a creepy pedophile name, huh? Yeah, they call him Mr. McFeely, one of the one of the characters. Um, was American television personality, musician, puppeteer, writer, producer, and Presbyterian minister. He was creator, showrunner, and host of the preschool television show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which ran from 1968 to 2001. Wow. Born in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh, Rogers earned a bachelor's degree in music. Wah, 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 1951. I'm going to have him in great, because he was a silent generation. I think he was too young to be World War II generation. Um, so back then, any degree was a good degree. It, it still stings me a little bit, but that's the rules. Began his career in 1951 in NBC New York. <coughs> Re returned to Pittsburgh in 1953 to work for children's programming at PBS television station WQED. Graduating from Pittsburgh Theological Seminar, became a minister in 1963, attended University of Pittsburgh's Graduate School of Child Development. Boy, he, um... Oh. That's a lot of... That's a lot of hard work dodging. Minister... <clears throat> now, to put on a show and write and all that, that's real work. I understand. But then it's at PBS, a government entity. Like, yeah, You know... It's not being a cop. That's a public sector, but that's, you know, that's some real work. Worked with psycho child psychologists. Yeah, that, that worked. Uh, after going through the data on the millennial generation, you psychologists sure got that, that field figured out. Margaret McFarlane. He also helped develop the children's show, The Children's Corner, 1955, Mr. Rogers, 1963. 68 created Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, ran for 33 years, programs critically acclaimed on focusing children's emotional and physical concerns such as death, sibling, rivalry, school enrollment, and divorce. Boy, yeah, he came up on that in 68, just in time. Died of stomach cancer in 2003 at the age of 74. Um, ba da ba, bo da boo, BDB. <clears throat> he was born to Nancy and James. James was a very successful businessman who was president of the McFeely Brick Company. All right, came from wealth. I gotta want to give him some kind of penalty for just sitting in the touchy-feely world. I just dreamed of becoming a doctor. Through... <laughs> Rogers grew up in a three-story brick mansion. Okay. <laughs> uh, played with puppets, da-da-da, played piano. Uh, had a difficult child. He was shy, introverted, and overweight. He was overweight? He looked skinny as hell in this picture. Had asthma, bully, taunted as a child. And a director became, overcame his shyness. Music composition. Cow. I really want to give him a quarter point just to. Maybe we'll just give him a footnote. Alright, so. Worked as an assistant, <coughs> program developer, worked off to develop puppets, characters, and you okay. All right, so he has some real work. Oh, all my nieces like Daniel the Tiger. Oh, God, it's all Daniel the Tiger. That's all they watch. Who knew that darn tiger would surpass Mr. Rogers? Any of you with little kids, you know who Daniel the Tiger is. Honest, I... And Ilsa. Oh, God, we all know who Ilsa is. Oh, yeah, I did it. They're singing the damn snow song. <sighs> let it be, let it be. Like, oh. 
Oh God! Please let me buy you some ice cream. Should you shut up? Um. All right, little ones aside. Real world working experience, but he came from wealth. Any degree with good degree back then, got it. What's he doing? He worked until he got cancer, basically. So he gets a score of one with a huge asterisk. Dude really wasn't going to become an engineer. Um, would I like to have a beer with him? Yeah, I would. I would like to have a beer with him. Should he have ran for office? Yes, he could have ran for office. He wouldn't be the first guy I vote for, but you know, again, compared to any politician today, Mr. Rogers would get my vote. So, yes, I would, I would do that. Jim Gaffigan. Who's Jim Gaffigan? Gaffigan, comedian. Oh, I, I, this guy looks familiar. Chesterton, Indiana. His mater, material is often about fatherhood, observations, laziness, and food. Memoir Dad is fat. All right, let's just go to early life. Oh, born in Elgin, Illinois. All right, son. Blah, blah, blah. I grew up at Chester, the youngest of six children, often jokes about growing up at a large home. Mother, uh, Marsha, was a charity worker and fundraiser. She accomplished needlework. She died of cancer in 90. Oh, at age 53. Dad was a banker, was president and CEO of the Mercantile National Bank of India for 50 years. Told you, boo, boo. From seminarian, he was also invented. Oh, okay, he died of lung. Jeez! His parents dying early. Gaffigan was the first of his family to attend college. Um, see careers that promise job security. However, wait. Okay, Gaffigan's father encourages his children to seek careers that promise job security. However, at the age of five, five he knew he would want to grow up and become an actor. And yeah, well, he attended Purdue for one year. He's remember that he transferred to Georgetown School of Business where he graduated in 1980 with a degree in finance. Ooh, get, you got to get half a point on that. Got to get half a point on that. He probably thought, <clears throat> although Gaffigan had hated studying finance, he worked as a litigation consultant for a short time. Graham was horrible at it. No, dude, you're probably just fine. It's the fucking field. Um, okay, I'm going to give him half a point because finance was with, and he's older. It was one of those degrees that, at, if you said business, I would give him a whole worthless degree. But like economics or biology, even biology, I won't, it's only a quarter point, but you get, you get half a penalty for majoring in finance. Um, he, where did, you know, he worked a real job, he has real stand-up, uh, real work. Became a stand-up comedian in the 90s. Made the Letterman. Comedy, 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 2014 comedy special. Most popular on Pandora, 2016 on tour. He's still working. Still working. Uh, so he came from wealth and they majored in finance, half a point. <clears throat> Both of which I'm somewhat lenient towards because, uh, well, back he's roughly my age, a little older. No one told us that finance was a worthless degree. Uh, but then also, it, it, he was born to a dad who became president. It wasn't his fault. Um, he's not a putz like Andrew Yang. Hey, free money from everybody else for everybody. Vote for me. I take a percentage. How that, gang? <laughs> God, I hate Andrew Yang. Um... Yeah, he gets 1.5, but I would still vote for him. And yeah, I'd love to have a, a coffee or coffee a beer with him. Um, who, I mean, for the sole reason he's a comedian, and comedians are usually a little bit more interesting, funny, and in, uh, intellectual, even though a lot of them don't realize it. Um, yeah, and he's, he's still hustling. He's still working. Yeah, he can run for office. Absolutely. I'd vote for him before I vote for Mr. Rogers. Let's put it that way. All right, there you go. Questions, answers, links to everything down below. Asshole Consulting now has a phone number. You can talk to me directly for gobs of money. I just really wanted to get a flip phone to write it off. Oh, I'd suck if no one ever called me. The Phone That Never Took a Call by Aaron Cleary. Sequel to The Smartphone He Desperately Wanted to Get Rid of. All right, see you guys later. Toodles.